Greetings, people of the internet. It's Scott with CircWorks, and I am in my garage, which can only mean one thing, that it's time for Mad Props, the show where I give you some step-by-step -step instructions on how to build some cool props that you can use for videos or trade show exhibits or comic cons or whatever. Uh, I'm going to be working on something for a comic con display. So it's been a while since I've been in the garage. Well, not actually since I've been in the garage. I mean, I park my car here and I, I come in through the garage all the time. But since I filmed the video in the garage. So what am I going to build today? Well, like I said, uh, Phoenix Comic Con's coming up. And I am going to do some videos on some Comic Con tips and things like that. This, this I think, falls more into a different category. Uh, specifically Mad Props, which I've done a few in the past, but it's been a while, so I'm anxious to get started. So what am I going to build? Well, I'm. if you know anything about uh, CircWorks, my company, and what I do when I exhibit at cons and everything, you'll know that I have sort of a mad scientist laboratory factory vibe, and uh, with that mad science uh, comes, uh, comes the opportunity to build some kind of cool displays. I've built my table that looks like a conveyor belt and I've got pipes and all kinds of weird crazy things. But I want to build a display that I can put some products in. I'm not ex exactly sure what I'm going to do, what I'm going to display in it yet, but I have this crazy idea. I was watching an episode of Back to the Future and if you've seen that plutonium case that um, Doc Brown builds, I'm going to try to build something very similar to that. I'm going to put some of my own branding on it so it won't be exactly movie like screen accurate. But I ordered on eBay an anvil case, which is used for carrying, um, you know, I, musical instruments or whatever. Um, they're really nice cases, really heavy duty. This one's a little older, so I'm going to see if I can clean it up. Um, and, uh, you know, clean it up, paint it, and I'll take you through these steps. We'll, 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 see, uh, we'll see what happens. But here is the case. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I've done this before with another on another video where I picked up this box that looked heavy and it was actually really light because it was just made out of cardboard. This thing actually is kind of heavy. So so I am going to turn this, and if you've seen the movie Back to the Future, I mean, this is the pretty much the exact model that they used. Um, I found it and uh, got a pretty decent, decent, uh, decent price on it. But I am going to turn this into this. So the first step in the process is trying to restore this as close to the original as possible as far as the, you know, making it clean it up, making it look nice and everything. So I've seen people that have built these before um, and they've replaced all the hardware. I mean, you can, you can actually buy, you know, all these little hardware pieces. I'm not that concerned, even if it is a little gritty, that's fine. Um, I'm not too concerned about that. I think also once I once I painted everything, it's going to help pop, everything pop or whatever. But it, it's it's okay if it looks a little worn and everything. So, um, but I do want to clean it up as best I can. So not really. I've never done this before, so I don't really know the best way to clean metal. But I did some research on this place called the Internet. Perhaps you've heard of it, um, and found that uh, vinegar well works well and baking soda works well. Probably don't want to mix them together unless you want to do like a school science experiment volcano type deal. Um, so first I'm going to try some vinegar and then I'm going to go over it with some baking soda and maybe a little bit together just to add some little uh, suds or whatever and uh, we'll see how that works. So yeah, I have no idea how this is going to turn out, um, but uh, it can't make it any worse, right? Okay, I went over a lot of this with the, with the vinegar. I haven't done anything with baking soda yet. Um, it's getting rid of some of the this discoloration, but there's there's still some um, rust and stuff like that that doesn't seem to come off. So, but it's it's definitely looking better. Like I said, it's an improvement. So, get this black kind of plastic thing. We'll see how that cleans up too. Cause that was kind of. I mean, it looks like it cleaned up pretty well just here, but you never know when it when it's wet like that. It looks shiny and stuff anyway. They need to dry. So I'm just going to keep going over this with the vinegar and then, uh, then we'll try the baking soda. All right, got some a uh, little bit of water and some of the baking soda and an old toothbrush. 
I went through most of this and a lot of the, the, the rust and stuff is coming off. Let's see how well this part is really rusty. So we'll see how much we can get off of this. Like I said, I don't think we're ever going to get it like perfect. It's not going to look brand new, but it is going to be an improvement. And it, takes, it takes a little bit of elbow grease, but I can already see some of it coming off. But, you know, who knows how old this case is, what it's been through, you know, traveling and around the country or whatever, if it's part of, you know, some musician's, you know, kit. But, um, and I can tell you the inside, the inside, I didn't show you that yet, but it looked a lot better than I thought, even from the pictures when I ordered it. But I'm probably going to have to replace it because it, it's really funky. It smells bad. So, plus, plus I'm going to have to, you know, once I decide exactly what I'm going to display in it is going to depend on what I do to the inside of it. So, I'm going to try to add just a tiny little bit of vinegar. So, get some suds there, see if that helps any, I don't know. But yeah, it's looking better. Make sure I get all around the sides here. I'm just dreading when I have to mask this thing off because I'm going to have to mask all this stuff off. You know, I thought, I was wondering if there was a way to pull all the hardware off and reapply it, but I don't know what these look like on the other side, but I don't think that would be too easy. So it even might take a little time to mask it off. Um, but still, I think that's my best option. So, yep, yeah, I'm going to keep going at that and... Yeah, I, I know it's hard to see on camera because this angle and everything, but it does it looks it does look better. So I finished cleaning up the case, and I'll just kind of run around here and show you. I think it I think it looks pretty good. Like I said, it's it's not gonna look brand new, but but yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I got a lot of the stains off. There's still a little bit of you know most of the like rust and stuff. There's a little still a little discoloration and things like that, but you know. Um, like I said, this thing's, this thing's been probably, you know, beaten around and everything. So pretty happy with the way it turned out. So let me show you a few before and after pics just to give you a little close up so you can see. Okay, on to the uh, next step. We're going to have to mask this thing off so we can paint it that orange color. And uh, so I've got, you probably want to get some decent masking tape, the blue or the uh, frog tape, um, blue by 3M, I believe, or scotch. Well, scotch is 3M, I think. I don't know. Anyway, but just get some good masking tape. Um, also, I'm going to use an X-Acto knife, and the reason why is um, there's so many, if you can, I mean, you look at all these little edges and there's round corners and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the, the masking tape as flat as I can, press down on it, and then I'm just going to kind of go over, because they're, they're all angles, and just along the, the metal angles I'm going to cut, I don't know if you can see it more back here, but I'll show you as, as I do it. Um, but kind of go like that and cut it around. We'll see how that works now. I'm really kind of nervous about this because, like I said, there are a lot of, I mean, there's a lot of masking and a lot of, um, little round areas and everything, but uh, you know, I'm going to take my time and try to get it masked off as best as I can, and then uh, then we'll paint it after that. But let's uh, let's go on to the uh, masking stage. All right, I've taped off a few edges here and cut them like I was talking about with the X-Acto knife. But um, let me go ahead and just show you one of these steps. So I just want to make sure that. You know, I'm not wasting too much of this masking tape because this nicer tape is a little more pricey, so we don't want to waste any of it. Um, I'm just gonna lay it down here, and this uh, and this blue tape's pretty good. It's it's nice and and thin, so it can kind of warp over all these little edges, which is good. But it's strong. And now I'm taking my thumbnail. I'm just making a crease right here. Try to press it down as good as possible. I'm going to go ahead and just make sure I cut where this little edge is here. Push that in so it's right in the edge. Make sure we really. Hold on, 
try to concentrate here. Okay, press that down there. Okay, make sure that crease is good. You want that, you want the paint to go right up to the edge. Okay, so now, like I said, you're just going to use this metal as a guide and just run this exacto knife along it. So here we go, just like this, right along the edge, nice and smooth. Now we're going to peel this piece up, pull it off like that, and just double check, make sure it's none of it came up. Just run your finger along there like that, and then we get that. So we got all our straight lines, now we're going to have to go around some of these corners. Where did I put my tape here? There we go. Piece here. Same thing here. Press that down. Kind of go along with it with our fingernail. Hopefully, that's gonna be a little harder because it's not, you know, it's not a, just a straight edge. So I gotta figure out where this actual shape is. But Here, uh, here, and then pull that up. I don't know if you can see. It's I know it's I should be tighter in on this, but I'm limited as far as my camera setup. Hopefully, it's a little jagged right there. There we go. I'm going to do the rest of these and then we'll get back and uh, hopefully uh, start painting this thing. All right, so now I have taped the whole box. You can kind of take a look at it there. Got it all taped and cut out, so we are getting ready to do the next step, spray painting this thing. Now, I was kind of worried that I wouldn't find the right color paint because the it's almost like a yellowish orange. Um, and a lot of times spray paint, you're real limited to what colors you can get. Um, there is a brand out there called Liquitex, and they make some like artist spray paints in all kinds of different shades and stuff. They're a little pricey, so... Um, if I had to go that route, I would, but I found this, and they sell this at, uh, uh, there was Rust-Oleum, they sell it at Home Depot, um, I think Walmart carries it too, um, but this is pretty much the right color I'm looking for, um, not a huge, like, bright, like, day glow yellow, but, uh, got a little bit of an orange to it, um, so it's, uh, Marigold Gloss, and if you can see here, also bonds to plastic, which is what which is good because that's the surface we're going to be painting on and a lot of paints i mean um you know fairly recently they started making these plastic paints um or paints that also work on plastic i remember when i was younger i tried to paint all kinds of plastic stuff and it would just scrape right off but this stuff works pretty good i've used um Kryolan has a brand called fusion i think that works real good and i've used this stuff pretty uh pretty often too so um, so anyway, this is the paint we're going to use, so let's go take it out in the yard and spray it down. Alright, there goes nothing. Now I haven't primed this or anything, but I don't think I'll need to. And, you know, of course we're going to have to see if we have enough paint to do the whole thing. I only bought one can. A number of coats because we've got a pretty dark color underneath so but uh, I'll just keep doing this and then we'll come back and see how it looks when it's done and we'll pull the tape off as you can see uh, we finished painting the box 
So now it's kind of the moment of truth. We're going to pull out this tape and see how it looks. I'm a little nervous, but uh, let's check it out. All right. Uh, tape should come off pretty well. That's pretty good so far. I did a pretty decent job masking it off. I don't see any like overspray or any places I missed so far. Of course, I say that and I could jinx myself, but looking pretty good. Especially with all these little round corners and stuff. That X Acto knife is the thing that kind of did the trick, cutting around those areas. You know what, let me stop this here and I'll, I'll just, yeah, I mean, you've seen some of me pulling this stuff off. So I'll stop it, I'll pull the rest off and I'll show you there. Now it looks like I, there is a little blue here, which I must have missed, but I can, I can probably just mess up a tiny bit and spray that and hit that little area and we should be good. And uh, so there you have it without the uh, masking tape on, came out pretty good. And there were a couple areas I had to go in, I just kind of masked off a little area and spray that. Um, so right now, I don't think I missed anything. You can kind of see, well, <laughs> I'll kind of roll this around so you can see. And awesome, so it looks pretty good. I mean, outside's almost done. I mean, there's some stickers and stuff we need to apply, but I think before we do that, I'm gonna go ahead and um, open it up and pull the foam out. And I've got some idea what, what I want to do inside there. So let's, uh, let's take a look inside. Okay, uh, let's have a look inside. So we'll just unlatch these. And, oh, get a whiff of that. Yeah, yeah I want to pull out all this foam. So, um, I mean, it would have been nice nice protective uh, thing for a snare drum or whatever came in here um, but one of the things like I said it, it smells bad so I want to get rid of that the other thing is what I'm carrying in here isn't so precious that I need all this padding um, what I am more concerned about is having more room so I mean there's probably you know like an inch here on each side so um, so if I pull this out and I make it a little thinner that should give me more room to display whatever I want uh, still haven't decided on that yet. So I'm going to pull this stuff out, but what I, I was trying to figure out what to do. At one point I was thinking of just replacing the foam. Uh, some of that foam, and I didn't really look online for like the best deal, but I did go into like a Joann's and uh, price the foam they had there, and it was kind of pricey. Um, but what I did find is um, I use this craft foam stuff for a lot of different projects, and usually it comes in... I don't know, like an 8 by 10 sheet or, or like 11 by 17 sort of somewhere around that size sheet. Um, but uh, so I thought, well, maybe I can get two of those big sheets and kind of cut them and and uh, and lay that stuff with this craft foam. But then I found this at, uh, let's see, I believe it was Joann's. And it's a big giant roll of this stuff. It don't, This stuff... They only had two colors, white and black, but I need the black, so so that's what I'm going to try to use. It's a, you know, it's a real thin kind of a spongy type, not spongy, but more of a, I don't know what you would call that, rubbery type foam. Um, so I'm going to cut pieces out of that, and then I'm going to line it with that, and we'll see how we'll see how it turns out. So let me pull all this stuff out. Oh, that's nasty. Ugh. Now, oh. You know, it kind of sticks to the sticks to the wood inside here, so I may have to do some scraping or something. But ah, uh, man, I'm glad to get rid of this, this foam and the smell. But uh, let me do that, and we'll get back. <laughs> all right. So I pulled all the foam out of here. There's still a little stuck to where it's glue, but that's all right because I'm gonna paste. Uh, some new stuff in there and probably hide that. The only thing, there's uh, there's some little knots and things in here. I don't know really what to do about that because the stuff I'm using isn't as thick, so it might 
show some of that. I'm not sure. The other thing is I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with this. Um, it's going to kind of, this, these little straps that hold this up, um, it might kind of get in the way depending on what I display in this. Because probably what I'm going to do is it'll probably sit like this and there'll probably be some sort of display here. So these probably won't work for that, but I don't really want to get rid of them. So what I might do is take them off and put some Velcro on so I can uh, attach and re reattach them if I deattach and reattach. Up there. So anyway, so uh, yeah, that's the box with the foam out. Let's uh, start. I'm going to start cutting some foam and we'll put uh, we'll start lining this back up. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, I got this uh, roll, big roll of fun foam. I think that's just the brand name, Craft Foam. Um, and this stuff is like super cool if you've ever worked with it, um, you'll know what I mean, but you can do uh, just amazing things with this. Um, and let me show you, here's an example. I did this, this is a, a Halloween costume or cosplay costume I did for my son. Um, and believe it or not, all that metal, that's all that craft foam underneath. All these little screws or bolts. Those are, you can buy like little, a whole, like a bucket of all these little tiny shapes. And I just took the circles. And the key is like for something like this is just layering the pieces on top of each other and giving it some dimension. So, I mean, really, and it's not really that expensive of a material. So something, uh, I, I mean, I do all kinds of cool stuff with this. So um, that I just wanted to show you the potential of that, what you can do with it. Um, but this is going to be a lot simpler. Um, we're just going to line the inside, here let me move over here, of this crate over here. Um, and uh, if, you're, you know, if you're watching this video because you want to build like one of these plutonium cases because you want like a, a replica or something from Back to the Future, um, you're going to, this step is a little different. Um, the actual movie prop, it's got the big thick spongy foam and it's got the little plutonium things in here. So that's not really going to be what this is, that's not what I'm doing here. Um, again, this is going to be some sort of a display case. So, so I'm actually using this real thin foam, and I've cut a few pieces out here. Um, and so I've got a straight edge here, and I've already measured this out. And let's see. Find my marks. And again, just with an exacto knife, I don't know how well you can see this. I probably should zoom in, but let's cut these pieces out here. And it's difficult to see where I'm at. But anyway, so you, you just cut out the pieces. And I've already got some pieces pre-cut. So, hold on. As you can see, I've got square pieces cut here. They should fit in here. And I am going to use some, uh, to make sure everything fits. And I'm going to use some spray glue to adhere that to this. And it's going to be tricky because once you use, I've been using a Super 77 3M, is it 77? I think so. I'll have to find it, <laughs> but uh, 3M spray spray adhesive to uh, to get this to work. And the problem is, it doesn't. Once you stick it, it's hard to pull it off. So you got to try to get it right on the first try. So let me find my spray glue, and we'll get to uh, um, attaching this uh, foam. Okay, so this is the spray adhesive I use, um, and I've tried off brands and things like that, and they're uh, yeah, they're not great. I would recommend using this. It is not, uh, it's not removable. There are, they do make another version that you can use for paste up, like advertising, well, back in the days when you used to paste things up. But uh, they do have another kind that is removable. This stuff is permanent, and, uh, but it works really good. It'll give a good bond. So what we're gonna do is spray this stuff, and I usually don't like to spray it in my garage because the overspray gets sticky, but just for the sake of demonstration, uh, I'm gonna, Go ahead and do it. So just like you were painting the spray paint, I don't know how well you can see, but we're going to spray this piece here. Okay. You don't need a whole bunch, but you know, you want a decent coat. And I did mark this. 
somewhere, and now I can't see my mark. Um, let's see. So I put a top on it somewhere, and I cannot see that now. Oh, here it is. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and just line this up at the bottom here. Make sure it's. See that? Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I am not a professional videographer, so. So, yeah, you can see we've got that piece. I wanted to make sure I got the big piece in first, and the other ones are going to go over it. It would be kind of hard to put those pieces, the side pieces, in first and fit that fit that over. So just kind of pay attention to that. So. So there you see, we've got the back wall. We're just going to paste more pieces on here uh, as we go. All right, you ready for this? So I've got all the pieces laid in, and let's take a look. I am really happy with the way this turned out. So um, I don't know how well you can see that, but I've lined everything. This this uh, craft foam is awesome for what I needed to do. Um, it conforms. I don't know if you can see this right here where this kind of comes in and everything. It pops out a little bit. Conformed really well to all that. Really happy with the inside of this thing now. So i um, going to make a great display case for whatever I decide to display. So next, we have to start uh, applying some of the uh, stickers and decals to this thing and finish this up. So let's go do that. Okay, so here you can see I've designed a bunch of uh, just uh, like warning decals, hazardous material decals, uh, and had them printed out. So I've got a sheet here, and it's just on big, you know, photo paper. Um, now I'm going to cut these out, and then we're going to spray glue these, uh, these to the uh, case. So let's cut some, got my ruler, you can see I already cut one piece out so they kind of look like that. Very simple, just make four straight cuts. Might have been able to do them all in one with big one big long cut, but I don't know if they lined up, how well they lined up or not. I don't know if I'll do. I'm still debating what else I want to do. Um, I've got a bunch of these hazardous material stickers that are that, are, that I'm going to use for different things. I don't know how close I want this to be the actual like the actual one from Back to the Future. I know it's going to vary a little bit. But I might keep it to just the radioactive plutonium, and because I've got like biohazard and nano nano hazard stickers, and you know, let's see, caution, antimatter, um, some smaller ones, and I'll use these for other things, for other like smaller displays and things like that. But so anyway, we have these, and uh, I'm going to show you a little trick on how best to apply like uh, small items like this. All right, so here's a little pro tip on um, applying um, spray glue, spray adhesive to like smaller items like these little signs. So you want to get something kind of like a stiff cardboard. This is uh, like a presentation board. I used to call it foam core back in the day. I don't know the technical term for it. But you want to cut like a long strip out of it like so. And then you want to get some low tack masking tape and you know pull about the same amount of length from it like that. Bend it over at the top here. Just press down on there. Same thing at the bottom, bend it at the bottom so that the sticky part is on the top here like this. And you're just going to take your stickers, place them face down stickers or whatever you're going to be spraying, just right along this sticky back area here, just 
like that. And then you're going to get your spray adhesive. You're not going to get it all over your fingers because it's on the stick and you're just going to spray it. And then you peel the pieces off when you're done and apply it to whatever you're, you're sticking it to. All right, I've, I've applied the spray adhesive. I'm going to pull this off here. Now sometimes, if it's real small, what you can do is like get your X-Acto knife and just pop it on here like this. Let's see. And then you just kind of position it where you want it. So this is going to be right there in the center. And just press down. Presto, there you go. Instant sticker. Now I've got some other ones that I'm going to apply, and then I've got, got some decals that I'm going to transfer onto here too. And uh, that's probably going to about do it, really. Um, let's see. You can see, I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but I went ahead and, with just with a Sharpie, I wrote plutonium and then some nonsense stuff. I don't really actually know what the rest of how to fill these forms out. So the other thing that, uh, yeah, I should. I really didn't think this through because if I ever have to take this somewhere with me, if I'm doing a traveling show, it's probably not a good idea to have these labels on here because I will probably get stopped at whatever customs there are. Um, so I probably should have figured out a way to make them so I can remove them. But I can always, you know, stick something over them or whatever or, you know, whatever. Um, but anyway, just a thought. Okay, we got one more piece. Uh, the sticker that we're going to apply. You see plutonium handle with care. And um, I will actually probably be putting more of my own branding type stickers on there. But as far as the look and feel of the Back to the Future um, plutonium case, this is the last piece. So I'm just going to line that up right here. Oops, you know what? I don't want this other part on. Oops. Okay. I don't want this. There's a sec separate part that I had on there. I'm going to try to... Got my little squeegee. I'm gonna just press down on there. Make sure. And so, yeah, this is just a you know a vinyl ad adhesive. Um, you can get these at. You can get them at I guess at Fast Signs. Um, it's a chain, but they've got a, like a minimum order. Um, but I know a guy who does this locally, um, so you might want to look into that if you can. Because it's the fast signs route is kind of expensive, especially for something small like this. So, yep, oh, that is not so far. It's not sticking. Let me. Yeah, it's not very smooth surface. So. I'm hoping this will stick. Usually, you can get it to adhere to pretty much whatever, but. Okay, let's see. I don't want to have a problem here. Uh, let me try it with my hand instead of this. Sometimes, uh, you know, they make these things, but sometimes your hand works better. That's just to take your time with it. There we go. That looks better. There we go. All right. I'm gonna press it down with my fingers just to make there's no make sure there's no pieces coming up. Just put the rest of this back on here if I want to use this for something else. Okay. The last piece. Okay, well that will about do it. Um, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, if you did like this, then uh, please like it on Facebook. Uh, if you have any questions, leave comments. Um, and if you want to see more of these type of videos, please subscribe. 
And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what I have coming up as far as the mad props type stuff. I'm. Um, I might have some more stuff for my booth, but I'll be doing another series on tips for comic cons. Um, so you might want to check that out. And then of course I've got my comic videos and all that kind of stuff. And hopefully around the corner, some really cool stuff. So uh, thanks for watching, and that is all.